Hello, friends. Welcome to Trivia Over Tea, the quiz show podcast where we drink tea and play trivia. I am your host, Matthew Cook, and I'm here virtually once again with our scorekeeper, Carter Zanke. Carter, it's been a while. How are you doing? Oh, just glad to be back from the hiatus. Yeah, we had a not-so-restful July off, um, but we're back and ready to go with uh, more episodes of your favorite trivia podcast. And uh, we're very happy to have our two contestants here today. So let's meet them first. Coming back for his third time on Trivia Over Tea, we have Evan. Hi, guys. It's Evan. Um, I'm an opera singer. And yeah, I'm, we're currently all in Steamboat Springs for some singing, which is really very, very, very fun. That we are. Come see us in company this weekend. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, we also <laughs> have Colin. Hi, I'm Colin. I'm also an opera singer in the same room as Matthew and Evan. Uh, My middle name is Trivia, so I'm ready to win, baby. Oh, fantastic. And we all have, we all brewed um, tea in our uh, common kitchen. I'll turn my mug around to say that, to show that it says Eureka Springs, Arkansas. I just got this a week ago. So yeah, brand new mug. And we're all ready to go with our tea. So Let's get going. Uh, As with all of our regular episodes, we'll have four rounds of questions today, each with a slightly different format. And without so without further ado, Carter will explain the rules for round one. Oh, let's hope I remember them. Round one is our first general knowledge round, consisting of five multiple questions for each of you. Questions here are worth 10 points each. So just choose the right answer and those 10 points are yours. Yeah, we've only done the show, what, about 80 times. So easy to forget. All right. At any rate, Evan, you're up first. Are you ready? I am. Alrighty. Question one. Which of the following NFL quarterbacks was drafted in the sixth round of the NFL draft? A, Aaron Rodgers, B, Tom Brady, or C, Peyton Manning? This is such a great question for me, Um, like personality wise, all this stuff. Um, I'm going to go with uh, Peyton Manning, C. Uh, No, it was actually Tom Brady. He was the 199th pick in the 2000 draft. Rodgers was the 24th overall pick in 2005, and Peyton Manning was the number one pick in 1998. (laughs) Question two. Which of the following countries has never been invaded by the United Kingdom? A, Ghana, B, Vietnam, or C, Guatemala? Oh, is this me still? I'm yes, sorry. That's, uh, yes, it's still you. I, I forgot. My bad. Um, I'm going to say Guatemala. That's correct. Um, the UK has invaded all but 22 countries or their predecessors around the world. Question three. Which LA neighborhood is a thin strip of land that connects San Pedro to the rest of the city? A, Harbor Gateway, B, Echo Park, or C, Silmar? I like the sound of Harbor Gateway, so I'm going to go with A. That's correct. San Pedro is the site of the Port of Los Angeles. Question four. Which of the following molecules are created by lightning moving through the atmosphere? A, ozone, B, sulfuric acid, or C, nitrogen gas? C, nitrogen gas? It was actually ozone. Uh, lightning releases enough energy to break apart oxygen, O2, gas into oxygen atoms, um, which then can combine with oxygen gas to form ozone, which is O3. There you go. Hmm. And finally, question five. Which amendment to the United States Constitution moved Inauguration Day from March 4th to January 20th? A, the 18th Amendment, B, the 19th Amendment, or C, the 20th Amendment? C, the 20th Amendment? That's correct. The 18th Amendment established prohibition, and the 19th Amendment expanded voting rights to women. Hmm. All righty, Colin, are you ready for your five questions? Just a sec. (sighs) Yeah, I'm ready. (laughs) Question one. The the Bermuda Triangle's traditional three points are Bermuda, Miami, and what Caribbean city? A, Havana. B, Santo Domingo, or C, San Juan? I'm going to throw out uh, Havana, A. Uh, No, it's actually San Juan in Puerto Rico. Ah. Yeah. Question two. 
Which language is Finnish most closely related to? A. Hungarian, B. Mongolian, or C. Estonian? Uh, we'll go C. Estonian. Um, it's actually A. Hungarian. The Finnish language is rather unlike its neighbors, not even following into the Indo-European language family, and this makes it quite difficult for foreigners to learn it. Question three. Ben Q, Zowie, and uh, Skepter, Scepter, sorry, are all companies that primarily produce what electronic? A, keyboards, B, monitors, or C, hotspots? B, monitors. That is correct. Question four. That my, my Scepter monitor came in handy. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, my brother wrote that question. I, it's, uh, that's not my cup of tea. Question four. What element turns blue in liquid form? A, nitrogen, B, helium, or C, oxygen? I'll guess B, helium. It's actually oxygen. Liquid oxygen is ah. extremely dangerous, and there are many precautions taken in labs to mitigate its formation. And finally, question five. What former beetle formed the band Wings in 1971? A, John Lennon, B, Paul McCartney, or C, George Harrison? B, Paul McCartney? That's correct. The band produced hits like Live and Let Die and Maybe I'm Amazed. Well, that's the end of round one. And uh, so, Carter, can you please give us a score update? We have a pretty close game with Evan at 30 points and Colin at 20 points. It's now time for our weekly audience question. Uh, if you recall, we did not have one last week because there was no show last week. So we're starting a new one this week. And it is... <laughs> What Chilean author of the House of the Spirits was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2014? So have a think about that. Send me your answer, and I'll announce the correct answer next week. And so now it is time for round two. So Carter, can you please tell us the rules? Yes, round two is our open-ended question round, where you'll each get five questions on the same topic. Uh, questions here are worth 20 points each if you get them correct. And if you don't, your opponent can answer for 10 points. Is that already? Everything? You both are going to get the same topic for round two, um, and that is uh, famous retail stores. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. I think this is a pretty good category. So, at any rate, Evan, are you ready for your five questions? I sure am. All right. Question one What retailer is headquartered in Bentonville, Arkansas? and operates over 10,000 locations in 24 countries. Uh, Levi's. No. The jean company. <laughs> no. I, OK, let, let me clarify this. I'll, I'll, give, I'll let you have a second guess. Um, we're looking for like stores, like big retail stores. OK. I guess then like Walmart? That's correct. Yes, uh, okay. it was founded by Sam Walton in nearby Rogers, Arkansas in 1962. And okay. in the past month, I have driven by the Walmart headquarters. Question two. What retail store was originally founded in 1902 as Goodfellow Dry Goods? Hmm. I... I feel like I, I like, I can see the company that it is now, but I just do not have the name. So, um, I don't know, Target. <laughs> it is Target, um, and you'll notice that their clothing, their clothing brand is Goodfellow. That is, that is so wild. Yeah. So yeah, but founded in 1902 as Goodfellow Dry Goods. Pure and luck. <laughs> they're headquartered in Minneapolis, and they operate over 1,900 locations. Question three. What consumer electronics retailer, founded in 1966 as an audio specialty store called The Sound of Music, operates over 1,100 locations in the United States and Canada? Um, you said appliance? Like hardware? Uh, consumer electronics. Consumer electronics. Um, did Radio Shack go out of business fully? Um, I know. Is, I don't, is that your guess? I, yeah, Radio Shack is my guess. <laughs> it's not Radio Shack. I'm not sure if they're still in business or not. I know. There's maybe like, they're it's not. like, okay. five, but there's like two of them. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, it's not Radio Shack. Uh, Colin? Yes? You can answer now. Oh, I can answer. Oh, uh, Best Buy. That's correct. Um, they formerly op um, also operated locations in Europe, China, and Mexico. Wow. Question four, Evan. What department store's flagship location is on Herald Square in Manhattan, which has 1.25 million square feet of retail space? Macy's? That's correct. The building also contains the store's corporate headquarters. Macy's was founded in 1858. And finally, question five. What multinational bookstore went defunct after filing for bankruptcy in 2011? Barnes and Nobles? Not Barnes and Noble. No. Colin? The other one. The other one. <laughs> the other one. I can't read. Um, <laughs> hmm. I know it's not defunct, but half price books. No, this is Borders. Borders bookstores. Um, it had operated over 500 locations as Borders with an additional 175 locations as Walden Books before filing for bankruptcy. All righty, Colin, are you ready for your five questions? Born ready, baby. Fantastic. <laughs> Question one, what corporation started as a mail order catalog and was based in its namesake tower from 1973 until 1995? Uh, Sears? That's correct. The Sears Tower is now officially known as the Willis Tower, um, though I think many Chicagoans still refer to it as the Sears Tower. Yeah, as I, I believe a lot of, yeah, I, was, I just lived there. I, most people, I think, still call it the Sears Tower. Yeah. Question two. What department store, founded in 1899 by S.S. Kresge, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, K-R-E-S-G-E, -E, operated over 2,400 locations at its peak in 1994, though currently there are only nine stores left worldwide. Founder was Kresge, K-R-E-S-G-E. Hmm. By chance, is it J.C. Penny? No, not, not J.C. Penny. Uh, um, Evan? Kmart? Is it Kmart? Kmart. Yep, it was uh, Kmart. Um, it was a subsidiary of Sears from 2005 until 2019. Question three, what consumer electronics retailer founded in 1949 went out of business during the Great Recession in 2009? Would that be Blockbuster? Not Blockbuster. Evan? You said electronics? Yeah, consumer electronics. Was that Radio Shack? No, not Radio Shack. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. we, I know we already talked about Radio Shack. No, because I would have... <laughs> Because I would have been, yeah, I would have been like, yeah, it's out of business. No, um, this is Circuit City, actually. Oh, yeah. Circuit City. Oh. Um, and it, it pioneered the electronics superstore format in the 1970s, though it is now no more. Question four. What toy retailer, whose mascot was a giraffe, closed the last of its U.S. locations in 2021, although they announced this year that they would begin to operate 400 stores within Macy's locations? Uh, Toys R Us. That's correct. The rise of online retailers <laughs> I'm cost. It's like, no, it's not sports. <laughs> <laughs> the rise of online retailers cost Toys R Us their share of the toy market. Sad. And finally, question five: What office supply chain sells the Easy Button? Ooh. Locking in Staples. Yeah, that was easy. Okay. So staples um, or office? I was confused was, between yes. the two. Staples. Um, and their slogan, uh, that was easy, became their slogan in 2003. And in 2005, they developed the easy button, which became available for purchase in store in 2006. So there you go. That's the end of round two. Carter, can you please give us a score update? We still have a 10 point difference with Evan at 100 and Colin at 90. All righty. Now it is time for round three. So Carter, can you please tell us the rules? Yes, round three is a lot like round two, but now you have questions on a variety of topics. Questions here are worth 30 points each. If you went wrong, your opponent gets for 15 points. All righty, Evan, are you ready for your five questions? Yes, I am. Question one, what interstate highway connects Salt Lake City, Utah with Portland, Oregon by way of Idaho and hugs the Columbia River for about 150 miles? 84. That's correct. 
There is also an I-84 in the east that runs through Pennsylvania, New York, and Connecticut. Question two. Acetone is a common solvent used in chemistry labs, but it is also a common household item. What is it? Like, like what's its purpose, you mean? Yeah. What's it sold as? Oh, like its brand name or whatever? No, not a brand name. Just like, it, what do people <laughs> use it for or as? Is it like a... a, a like a floor cleaner? No. Colin? Acetone? Yeah. Um, like a window cleaner? No, it's nail polish remover. Actually. Oh, I knew it! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, acetone has many uses in the labs, um, but can be used to remove Sharpie or other permanent markings from glass um, is a great way, and is great for cleaning, as well as a great way to remove nail polish. But yes, nail polish remover is what we were looking for. Yes, there you go. Colin will be using some at some point, I'm sure. Yep, uh, within the next couple of days, probably. <laughs> there you go. Question three. In recent years, Lady Gaga famously performed with what now retired pop and jazz singer? Tony Bennett. That's correct. His final live performances were with Lady Gaga on August 3rd and 5th of last year at Radio City Music Hall in New York. Question four. In 1981, President Ronald Reagan ordered what um, ordered that what federal employees who were on strike return to work in 48 hours or be fired? Um, was it like secretaries? No, Colin. Do you know? Hmm. <laughs> like, I was gonna Your wild guess like national parks people. Uh, no, these were air traffic controllers. Oh. Um, the air traffic controllers union was in violation of the law that said that federal workers could not go on strike. And on August 5th, 1981, President Reagan fired the over 11,000 air traffic controllers who had not returned to work uh, following the order two days earlier. And he banned them from federal service for life. And it took the FAA 10 years to get the air traffic controller numbers back up to what they were in 1981. Wow. Yeah, That's nuts. and the civil service ban was lifted by President Bill Clinton in 1993, so most of the air traffic controllers never returned to work. So there you go. And finally, question five. Aaron, Celadon, and Harlequin are all shades of what color? Uh... Are they like shades of pink? Not pink. Colin? <laughs> uh, I'll say shades of green. They are all shades of green. Yes. Very good. All righty. And now, Colin, are you ready for your five questions? Absolutely. Question one. What interstate highway begins in downtown Kansas City and heads north along the Missouri River toward Omaha? That be I-435? Not I-435. Evan, want to take a wild guess? You said Kansas City to Omaha? Yeah. Um, I don't know, like a like 70? No. Um, uh, this is I-29. <sighs> and then it runs uh, I went um, all the way up to the Canadian border in North Dakota. Question two, what is the common name for botulinum toxin? Botulinum toxin, what is it commonly called? Um, a mustard gas? No, Evan? Um. Like, <laughs> I, I'm trying to think of like, like a, a weapon, you know, like the weapons that they use. Um, <laughs> this, this like is a tricky way. one and I wouldn't have, I don't know that I would have put the pieces together. Um, yeah. Like the term botulism comes to mind, but that's about, <laughs> that's all I got. <laughs> Okay. So, 
So botulism is your answer? Sure. Yeah, let's yeah, do that. That's not correct. Um, <laughs> believe it or not, um, botulinum toxin is Botox. Oh. Ah. Uh, yeah. uh, if you shorten it. Um, uh, Botox is one of the most potent toxins known, but has medical and cosmetic uses, as we all know. Question three. In 1596, the Polish capital was moved from Warsaw, oh, sorry, was moved to Warsaw from what other major city whose famous landmarks include the Wawel Cathedral and the Cloth Hall? The, 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 the word that's coming to mind is Glasgow, but I don't know if that's Poland. That's not Poland. Glasgow is in um, Scotland. Um, uh, Evan, do you know? Okay, I'm so incredibly far off. Yeah, we're, it was we're... moved to... To where? It was moved to Warsaw, in, which is the current capital, um, from what other major city, which is also in Poland? Krakow? It is Krakow. Yes, very good. Question four. In 2004 and 2005, what television personality served five months in prison for insider trading? <laughs> oh, what was the year again? 2004 and 2005. Insider trading. I'm um, gonna guess Kevin O'Leary. No, Evan. There weren't any hints about like what they did. They were just like a television personality. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, nah, um, it wasn't. Um, it wasn't Martha Stewart because she got hit later for like tax stuff, right? It's not Martha Stewart. That, that, is, is that your answer? Sure, yeah. It was Martha Stewart, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, after she, after she received some non-public information from her broker, she sold all 3,928 shares of Imclone Systems the day before the stock fell 16%. I thought she went for like tax stuff. Oh, no, know. it was insider trading. There you go. Yikes. Wow. Jeez. And... <laughs> Finally, question five. In 2007, who hit the 756th home run of his major league career, surpassing the record previously held by Hank Aaron? I'm trying to, Derek Jeter? No, not Derek, not Derek Jeter. Sorry, <laughs> Evan. Not Derek. Oh, uh, now I feel like I'm going to be judged. I have absolutely no idea. Um, I only know like the name Chase Utley. <laughs> well, well, Chase Utley did play for the Philadelphia Phillies. That's probably how you know his name. Uh, no, um, I don't I think he got anywhere him. close to 756. Probably. Home runs. Uh, yeah. um, no, this was Barry Bonds. <laughs> okay, that's the name I know, but like wouldn't. I've remembered. Okay. It was Barry Bonds. And he finished his career with 762 home runs. I thought after our our uh, dinner conversation that you might know some stuff about baseball. But, but I had already I had already written the question. Well well the thing you need to learn about me is that I'm very stupid. <laughs> All right, duly noted. <laughs> well, that's the end of round three. So Carter, can you please uh, give us a score update? We have Evan at 190 points and Colin at 105. All right, and now it is time for round four. So, Carter, can you please tell us the rules? Yes, round four is our showdown, where you'll each get the same three questions. We'll ask you to write down your answers, or otherwise make note of them. And we will award, uh, how much is it? 40 points. Yeah, 40. All the correct answers here. Yeah. All righty. Colin, Evan, are you ready? Yeah, it's just one moment. Okay. One moment. Here we go. Question right. one. I'm ready. <laughs> this was an official advertisement for Opera Steamboat. Please come see company August 5th and 6th at 7 p.m. Mountain Time at the Steamboat Springs Junior High School. Yeah. The it'll school. it'll be a it'll, it's the middle school at the middle yes at the middle school yes in a in our in the <laughs> cafeteria auditorium the, no, the, excuse excuse the cafetorium the cafetorium, the cafetorium yeah. you're right you're right <laughs> uh okay here we go question one 
Though he lived another 39 years, what final opera by Gioacchino Rossini premiered in 1829? Evan, what is your answer? I put Barber with two question marks. Okay, Colin? I put a Mose in Egito. No, this was actually William Tell. Oh, oh Guillaume. Yeah. Guillaume. Oh, oh, Guillaume Tell. Yeah, this is his 39th and final opera. <laughs> I think he wrote enough, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he did well. <laughs> question two. In 1925, what Tennessee school teacher was convicted of teaching human evolution. There was a famous trial. That's my name. Thanks. All right, do we have? And I mean, if you don't know it, make up a name. Colin, we'll start with you this time. What's your answer? Uh, I, I remembered the name Scott. Okay. Evan? Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know. The Lady Donovan. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> Obviously not. Colin, you got the, the first three letters right. Um, this was Scopes. John Go! T. Scopes, as in Go! the Scopes monkey trial. Yes, yes. Because I, I remember "Inherit the Wind." That was the that was the play I read in high school oh, about. Is that what that's about? I didn't yeah, know. it's like it's like based on based on that trial. Oh, good. To yeah, know. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, now, now I'm doing the trivia. Uh, yeah, clearly. Wow. I, <laughs> sounds like you need to be hosting. Um, <laughs> Scopes was in violation of Tennessee's Butler Act, which prohibited the teaching of human evolution in schools. He was fined $100, but his conviction was overturned on a technicality. And finally, question three. What American sprinter won four gold medals at the 1936 Olympics in Berlin? And he did it in front of Hitler, which is part of the significance. Guesses we want to. I just wrote down the name Michael Dwyer, which I know is definitely not it. But... No. Uh, uh, Colin. I'm going to go with Track Runnerson. <laughs> Good guess. Um, also incorrect. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this Damn is it. Sorry. close. Not really. Um, this is Jesse Owens. And uh, this was notable as Owens, a black man, was seen as dismantling Hitler, um, dismantling Hitler's myth of Aryan supremacy, before his very eyes. And in fact, Hitler was in attendance for Owens' victories. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Well, that's the end of the game. So Carter, can you please give us the final score? We have no change in score from the last time we gave the score. We have Evan at 190 points and Colin at 105. Well, congratulations, Evan. You have won. Do you have anything that you would like to say? Yay. Great. <laughs> that was a really rousing speech. <laughs> well, uh, that's our show for this week, folks. Thanks for uh, tuning back in after our little hiatus. And thank you, Evan and Colin, for being on the show again, as well as Carter Zenke for being our scorekeeper and Mason Cook for composing the music. Today's questions were written by Caitlin Fick, Tanner Tim, Lucas Hauser, Mason Cook, and yours truly. And thank you for listening. Please like and subscribe to Trivia Over Tea on your preferred podcast platform and leave us a review if you enjoyed it. Check out our Facebook and Instagram pages as well as our Twitter account. All of them are at Trivia Over Tea. And um, tune in next week, I think. Um, yes, well, you should tune in next week uh, when we have two new contestants and 33 more fantastic questions. So thank you. We will see you week.